Chapter 1. The Journey of Transformation from Procrastination to Increased Productivity Irrespective of what motivated you to engage this piece, and whatever your affiliation and discipline, the following guide is not only suitable for overcoming procrastination, but will help you pursue a more productive existence. The Now Habit approach focuses on resolving the underlying self-alienation, the tendency to work against yourself, caused by early training and cultural indoctrination. It breaks through the crushing assumptions of the Puritan work ethic that your output determines your worth, and the negative Freudian conceptions of human drives that society must subjugate and control a lower self. Instead, the now habit helps you reestablish a functioning connection with yourself, reducing inner conflict and allowing you to participate fully in your activity. It reduces your fear of being imperfect by providing you the skills to develop inner safety and positive inner dialogue, allowing you to take chances and start sooner. Most assignments are completed on time by procrastinators, but working at the last minute produces anxiety and lowers the quality of the final product. You may use a method to increase performance substantially, break away from toxic habits, and boost self-esteem and confidence, whether you're an organization or an individual. Neil Fiore, Ph.D., shared how the Now Habit tools helped him find time to write articles for the New England Journal of Medicine, Science Digest, and Reader's Digest, as well as write four books in 15 to 20 quality hours per week, all while maintaining a commitment to guilt-free time for friends, family, and the training required to run three half marathons. His customers who regarded themselves as obstinate procrastinators have succeeded with his technique. Dr. Fiore, his customers, and seminar attendees have benefited from the Now Habit approach for outstanding work and guilt-free leisure. It can also work for you. Chapter 2. Unraveling the Why and How of Procrastination Procrastinators may be found in many walks of life, achieving great things in areas they have chosen to spend their time in while failing miserably in others. Even the worst procrastinators have passion and energy for certain aspects of their lives, such as sports, hobbies, reading, caring for others, music, dancing, political discussions, investing, internet browsing, and gardening. When people explain why they procrastinate, many are quick to self-diagnose themselves as lazy. The now habit approach does not agree that laziness, disorganization, or other character flaws cause procrastination. It also rejects the notion that humans are inherently sluggish and require external pressure to inspire them. The healthy individual has an appetite for fruitful activity and for a high quality of life. George Bernard Shaw Procrastination relieves anxiety by diverting your attention away from something unpleasant or dangerous. The more uncomfortable your job is for you, the more you'll strive to avoid it or distract yourself with more enjoyable hobbies. The more you believe that never-ending labor deprives you of the pleasures of free time, the more you will seek to avoid it. Hence, the whys of procrastination could be a combination of the following. An expression of resentment to higher authorities. A shield against fear of failure. Avoidance of the fear of success. The how requires a series of self-assessments to understand how you end up in the trenches of procrastination. So it is expedient to isolate and observe objectively the character tributaries that empty into the sea of procrastination to understand how the relapses set in. After identifying them, you can utilize the start of bad habits to refocus your energy toward your objectives. Next, you need to take active steps out of the procrastination trenches. How? You'll get the most out of the now habit method if you're aware of your inner dialogue and how it relates to your procrastination tendencies. First, 
identify the potential sources of fear, say, of failure, using first principles, strip them to the very foundation, and dispel them for what they are, fears. Second, where you fail, use the failure as a springboard, not as a gauge of your capability or intelligence. Finally, make it a habit always to take on tasks and responsibilities head on, and after trying your best, do not accept the outcome, good or bad, as a measure of your self-worth. Chapter 3. Talk yourself out of procrastination and enjoy a guilt-free life with well-timed play. The language and tone with which you soliloquy, how you communicate with your inner self, plays a huge role in your motivation to take tasks head-on and follow them through. The now habit technique focuses on language, not because changing your vocabulary would make you stop procrastinating, but because the way you talk to yourself reflects your attitudes and beliefs, impacting how you feel and act. Developing new alternative self-statements that include choice, commitment, and the ability to say no is an important step toward expanding your variety of options when working on any assignment and transitioning from a procrastinator to an effective producer. The producer's concentration on option and choosing is the most freeing of all the traits distinguishing producers from procrastinators. I select, I decide, or I will messages Focus emphasis on a single personal objective with a strong sense of accountability for the outcome. Most of us are often guilty of talking to ourselves in a self-pitying, have-to manner about going to the dentist, sending cards to pals, paying taxes, working, or confronting the boss. Speak to yourself in a vocabulary that emphasizes outcomes rather than blame, choice over obligation and what is rather than what you believe should be. The capacity to say no is a crucial tool for exercising choice for procrastinators and relieves them of the guilt of deferring a task after a hesitant yes. Also, we need guilt-free play to give intervals of physical and mental refreshment to maintain high levels of motivation and reduce the tendency to delay in the face of life's expectations for high-level performance. When someone tells you their job really isn't work, they're telling you, I don't have to force myself to come to work. Neil Fiore, Ph.D. When long-term procrastinators spend their time with friends or in leisure activities, they feel terrible. Their guilt stems from having time for pleasure and not being productive, so their leisure is usually half-hearted and guilt-ridden rather than high-quality, guilt-free play. Did you know? According to studies about the personality differences of workers, the average employee wastes two hours per day on the internet and socializing, resulting in an annual pay loss of $759 billion in the United States alone. Chapter 4. Scale the Roadblocks in the Way of Action by Using the Reverse Psychology of Unschedule Procrastination is a phobic response to work-related concern, difficulty, failure, and anxiety because it allows you to avoid what you dread. You'll need alternatives to procrastination's addictive and destructive answer to deal effectively with these roadblocks to action. There are three now-habit tools to help you reduce the tensions and concerns that lead you to avoiding huge and critical tasks. The work of worrying can help you overcome your fear of failing and being imperfect. Persistent starting can help you overcome your fear of not finishing. Three-dimensional thinking and the reverse calendar can help you overcome your fear of being overwhelmed. You can develop abilities for preserving true self-confidence by employing the work of worrying, producing safety, and using the language of a producer. True confidence comes from knowing that no matter how calm or frightened you are, or whether you succeed or fail, you will give it your all, and if necessary, pick yourself up and try again. Finishing has its own characteristics of tying things up and polishing, although major jobs are fundamentally performed through a series of beginnings. 
You'll be able to finish because of your ability to overcome barriers to action. Continue asking yourself, when can I start? When you're terrified of ending and keep on starting, the rest will take care of itself. To better understand the usefulness of the reverse calendar, begin with your project's ultimate deadline, then proceed back to the present when you may concentrate your efforts on getting started with tasks. The unscheduled system is another concept that adopts reverse psychology, like the reverse calendar. When commencing projects, unscheduling recommends dividing tasks into 30-minute time slots. Starting such a program has been proven to help transform procrastinators into producers by committing to work for a little more than 30-minute portions as the day wears on. However, we tend to schedule our work time first and relegate recreational time, that is, if we ever give it space in our schedule. Fortunately, the unscheduling strategy can help you create a subconscious urge to work more and play less by prioritizing scheduling leisure time and limiting work activities to time slots of 30 minutes. The unschedule method requires you to begin your scheduling process with leisure activities, splitting the week into manageable chunks. Chapter 5. Learn how to harvest the juice of work peak times. Learning to work creatively and understanding that you may access creative moods at any time can make work less tedious and boost your enthusiasm for what you do. Creative states of mind skip much effort and worry, forcing you to defend yourself with delay by reducing the anguish of demanding tasks. Dr. Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi from the University of Chicago named mental states flow states, and those researching states of active attention at Harvard labeled them mindfulness, calm, concentrated energy, temporal expansion, joy in new ideas, Ease in avoiding or addressing issues and heightened attention are all characteristics of the flow state. Great writers and artists' early drafts and drawings mirror the same nonlinear, apparently unorganized creative process we all go through in starting a new project. Their early offers, like ours, require gradual refining and reorganization before reaching their ultimate shape. We may speed up our progress through the difficult starting phases of overcoming procrastination and barriers in our work by seeing how geniuses struggle with early versions of their work. Each time you begin working on your project, do a focused exercise to help you start a creative process that will easily blossom into the completed result as you create healthy work habits. For best performance and unlearning procrastination habits, it is crucial to take a few seconds to shift into a creative, non-critical state of mind. Working at peak times or flow states will complement your other now-habit tools and erase the majority, if not all, of the bad habits that kept you postponing earlier. Good attitudes and practices will replace procrastination and transform work into an engaging, focused, and creative endeavor. Working in the flow state, often known as the zone, eliminates the emotional impulse to procrastinate and allows you to make faster progress toward your objectives. The flow state teaches you to quickly move from your brain's survival processes to its creative functions building a miraculous bridge from worry to peace and safety. Chapter 6. How to Maintain a Fine Streak of Productivity Jacob Miller, a construction worker, had a wonderful and productive life after a month of adopting some of the now habit tools. However, he found himself relapsing after monotony began setting in for his daily routines. Until this time, Miller discovered he needed some dynamism in his approach to the now habits. In the long run, you must fine-tune and personalize any habit change program you set to work according to your specific needs. It must equip you to deal with setbacks and provide you with the tools to transform them into opportunities that help you improve. Let us see how to work around these bottlenecks. Great works are performed 
not by strength, but perseverance. Samuel Johnson Use planned setbacks. Your pre-planned setback will highlight when you're most inclined to delay. You now understand the consequences of your previous habits. Such deliberate setbacks are an integral aspect of productive procrastination. You may use your new setback skills at guilt-free play, that is, the unschedule system. Most importantly, unscheduling helps you work in the flow state to motivate yourself into utilizing your newfound skills. Take the reins of distraction. Distracting ideas can be creative and constructive, or they might just be random. They can also represent a release of suppressed emotion. Your mind constantly digests facts and sensations for your safety, progress, and enlightenment. But there are moments when the images and thoughts running through your head appear more distracting than helpful. You'll be better able to put distractions to work for you if you can foresee them and build a technique for avoiding them. Adopt mental rehearsal and effective goal setting. By employing mental rehearsal, you may ensure that you remember to begin your assignment at the scheduled time. You'll have provided your mind with a picture it can understand and a message it can work with. It will lead you to the location you have in mind for your chosen project. Your capacity to recommit to your objectives and bounce back after a setback is heavily influenced by how you establish those objectives. As a result, a final series of procedures is necessary to ensure successful goal setting that reduces procrastination and improves the ease with which you work and endure along the route to success. Conclusion In this piece, Dr. Neil Fiore points out the easy-to-ignore traits of procrastinators and suggests practical ways out of the highlighted rut. Procrastination can be cancerous in a productive life, and interestingly, some individuals cannot even identify the ravaging effects of such harmful habits in their lives. Therefore, this summary shines some light on the quintessential symptoms of procrastination. Being the worst critic of ourselves, closely examining our character traits will help us realize that we're subconsciously responsible for accumulating procrastination habits. Our resistance to authority, fear of failure, perfectionism, and fear of success are why we end up with procrastination. But surprisingly, procrastination is not overly bad. There's such a thing as productive procrastination. I've discovered that if you want to reach your true potential, it's much more effective to ignite a new passion for life than to dwell on past problems. Neil Fiore, Ph.D. Your inner thoughts and the words you use to urge yourself to complete tasks are also pivotal in the likelihood of procrastination. When you order yourself around with a straight timeline for a task, It relegates your self-worth on how much you can get done. This type of self-talk is unhealthy for your esteem and productivity. Instead of gritting your teeth as you struggle to tick off all the activities crammed into a day, you can utilize a win-win approach. Scheduling recreation first is the secret. You give yourself something to look forward to as a reward for intermittent efforts. With this approach, you understand quite well that the 24 hours of a day are not entirely available for productive work, and it is beneficial to let your hair down occasionally as the day wears on. Finally, be assured that you'll be able to reduce procrastination and enhance your general quality of life if you use the now habit ideas and approaches. Experiment with different tools and techniques to see what works best for you and your lifestyle. Try this. Want an easy way to follow through on your projects? Do these. Face your phobia. Make a to-do list. Break down projects into manageable parts. Recognize when procrastination begins. Remove all potential sources of distraction. Reward yourself regularly.